Hello, and welcome to Midweek, the student-produced talk show that deals with issues in both the JMU campus and the community. Uh, I'm Stefan Fogelman, your host, and today our topic are married students, uh, the pros and cons of being married in college, uh, and students who feel that they should wait until college. We have uh, many different guests today to, to talk to you about the subject, and we will begin by introducing our first panel. Dr. Dorothy Pomeraney. Uh, she is a professor from the Department of Living Sciences, and she has been at JMU for six years. My next guests uh, are a JMU student couple uh, who have been married for how long now? A year and a half. A year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are Ricky and, Chris, uh, Ricky and Christine. And your, Johnson. And your last name? Johnson. Johnson, that's mm -hmm. right. And uh, Ricky, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the show, Christine. I'd first like to uh, start by asking, Dr. Pomeraney has a very interesting subject to teach mm -hmm. at JMU, and I'd like to ask her about some of these non-traditional classes that she teaches. Right. Uh, Dr. Pomeraney, maybe you'll tell us about it. I teach two family classes, one called Contemporary Family that, that deals with the family as an institution and the kinds of experiences one has living in a family. And then I, I teach another one, a, a block course, uh, Family Relations. And uh, very popular course. I, I sometimes have uh, some married students who take it, or some who are engaged, or couples who are engaged. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I ought to follow up and see whether they get married. <laughs> uh, I also <laughs> teach uh, parenting and child development, as well as some education courses for home economics. Okay. What do you do in these classes? How do you teach a class about marriage and parenting? Well. I do not do much lecturing, although I, I do a little bit more than I used to because the students don't feel they're getting their money's worth unless there's some lecture. But I use a lot of group discussion. <laughs> um, we do use a, a, a textbook. We use visuals. We use guest speakers. We use panel discussions. Um, but it's a, a predominantly a, a class that uh, meets in small groups, and our focus is on the choices. I don't intend to tell them whether they should or shouldn't marry, but to provide some information that will help them with the choices that we all have to make. Okay. Uh, Ricky, Christine, could you just give me a brief uh, biography uh, of your married history and your dating history uh, before, you know, before now? Well, we came, we met, I transferred here and we met at JMU, both of us just met our junior year and we um, went out for about two and a half years, and we've been married a year and a, about a year and a half now. And we have a baby who's ten months, ten and a half months. And what's his name? Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, what uh, what kind of impact uh, did it play on your life uh, when you had to make the decision whether or not to get married? What very very big. Um, it was uh, over the summer that we had to make the decision, so we were away from school, but it was a day-to-day -day thing that we were thinking about. We should have taken your class. <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't taken your class yet. <laughs> but, we but it was a big decision. Yeah, oh, it was the biggest decision of our life, yeah. Who did you have to counsel you? Uh, our parents. Primarily our parents, your parents. Uh, JMU, counselors, uh, lots and lots of people, a lot of friends. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of parents. A lot of parents. Yeah. Well, you mentioned before that uh, you are in a sorority and, and he is in fraternity. Were you both in, in these Greek organizations uh, w when you did decide yes. to get married? Yes. Yeah. How, how did they react? <laughs> I think that would be interesting to know. We had 400 people at our wedding. That's great. <laughs> so they we were very supportive. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, great. we had very supportive. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite a tale. What uh, can you tell me uh, about the factors and, and the burden that it puts on your academic life? Uh, has JMU been helpful? Uh, with regard to your classes? Well, yeah, we have um, schedule. Ricky and I decided not to participate in the daycare, so we alternated schedules. And JMU, the teachers were real good about giving us overrides to be sure that we had the right the right classes. And we it really it's done our grades good. We don't go out as much. We have the baby to settle down and make us study. But yeah, it's really done us. How, how is it? Uh -huh. Has it been good for you too? Yeah, I'm not sure. I would say it was a burden. It was just something to adjust to. I mean. <clears throat> the nights that um, that we may have been going out, now you're at home, you're getting studying done, and maybe the baby was up a night, but it seemed like it balanced out the time that you had. It always seemed like you had enough time to study, or if not more, now that we were <laughs> married. 
Yeah, I imagine it would actually probably raise some students' grades. It does. <laughs> Instant <laughs> responsibility. It does. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. I believe it. What, what about your social life? Has that been hindered uh, because of marriage? Not because of marriage, but because of the baby. But then we have a, we have a lot of babysitters that they, guys <laughs> and they, fraternity boys want to come. And uh, we have a lot of babysitters. So no, it's not, it hasn't been anything for our, our social life or hurt it in any way. Sounds mm -hmm. like a great blood test. <laughs> Sounds like a great one. What about being a tradition, a non-traditional student? Is there any one thing in particular you can think of that you miss uh, about uh, not living on campus and, and, and being a, a, a regular student? We're a little bit more um, stationary. We can't just go and run out and go to Reddish Knob <clears throat> anytime we want to. I mean, we have to, we have to plan a lot more. I'd say we're a little bit more organized now because it's not just ourselves, it's the three of us that we have, you have to consider whenever you make a decision about anything. Mm -hmm. right. Is there any advice uh, that you can give to students uh, who are in love right now and, and are thinking about getting married and they're not sure? It, should, it, should they wait or should they wait? Well, it's just their personal opinion. Um, if they're mature enough to talk about it and mature enough to talk to people about it, then, then they're mature enough to make the decision. We just, it was a to it's totally individual what worked for us and we had so the support that we had at that time, we, we choose what we felt was right for us. So we can, yeah, oh, go ahead. They have said two of the really critical things. First of all, that they have support from each other mm -hmm. and from other groups, from family and, and from friends. And, and that is, is uh, a really critical uh, issue as far as the, what the data shows about married students. And the other thing is considerateness, <laughs> that they think about one another, not, well, you had the baby, so it's your kid, you take care of it, <laughs> and I'm off to, uh, to the parenting house, but that they work this th thing together, and uh, that really is, is critical. I suppose uh, it, it w could be a lot tougher. Uh, oh, if yeah. Parents <laughs> didn't, d didn't help out and those other factors. Right. So. Yeah, that, that's, that is interesting. Uh, the, the last thing I want to ask you, um, do you feel that, uh, do you personally feel that the trends are going in the direction of people waiting to get married? Uh, is it because of this new career, this new careerism? I don't uh, know. I, I'm, I think it's just our age, but I'm seeing a lot more people get married. We, uh, we've had a marriage every, mo every month for the last four or five months that we've been going to, but it is, it, they're trying to work in being a mother, having a career, having a family, all of that's been okay. working together. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. We're going to be right back and we're going to show you some other students and what they think. Thanks for joining us. What is your ideal age for marriage? Um, personally, I don't plan on getting married until the late 20s, about 28. I think that's a good age. Mine personally, I would say about 25 or 26. Well, I figure probably around 26 or so. I mean, because see, I'm, I'm pre-med myself, and I'm probably not going to get married until after I graduate from med school. So I figure it's best to go through school, and then, you know, if you're going to get married, you do it after. It's a lot easier then, probably. There is no ideal age for marriage, man. Um, I would say 26, 27. Oh, uh, I'd say 35, 30, something like that. Um, I'm not really sure exactly the ideal age, but it would definitely be after I uh, graduate from college. I wouldn't want to get married while I'm still in college. Um, I'd say probably 23, something like that. Probably be close. Post college. I mean, look behind me here. See all them girls? It's a lot of them. I mean, you get married while you're in school, you're not real smart. My dad shared with me a project that his Rotary Club and all the Rotary Clubs are undertaking to wipe out polio. Rotary is providing all the necessary vaccine to end this crippling disease. I'm really behind it because my dad was a victim of polio. Thanks, Mark. The Rotarians in your area would really appreciate your help. Hello, I'm Daniel Bryant. And I'm Anne-Marie Sims. We're the anchors of JMU Vireo News Show, JMU Today. Each week we bring you news and a new perspective of JMU's place in the Harrisonburg and Shenandoah Valley community. And of course, Mike Caldwell is here each week with the highlights of all the Dukes in action. So tune in and watch on cable channel 36 at 5, 30, and 8 every Wednesday and Thursday evening. 
And of course, you can catch me and you today live every Wednesday afternoon at 3. See you then. Charles Bronson isn't happy. Sure takes guts to vandalize parks or beat up on trees. But that's what some jerks are doing to our public lands. Only the land can't fight back. But we can. We can save our land, you and me. Let's face it. Someone who gets his kicks punching out flowers shouldn't be too much of a match for us. Right, take pride in America. Post Office Box 1339, Jessup, Maryland, 20794. I bet you're gonna do real good in college. I can never get the money for college. You could get a job. Maybe. Be a lot easier if I just had experience. In the Air Force, we'll give you experience in one of 200 specialized career fields, and we'll help you pay for college. So take the first step to your future. Call your Air Force recruiter. I'm gonna go play some ball. What are you gonna do? I think I'm gonna go make a phone call. My next guests joining me in the studio are Gregory Frangello and Carolyn Wadsworth, a JMU couple planning to get married after college. Carolyn is also the former Commuter Student Council president, and I will be addressing her on the issue of married student housing. Uh, my first question, though, for the both of them, uh, what considerations did the two of you make when deciding uh, not to get married until after college? Gregory? Um, well, we thought about living together next year, but um, after giving it a lot of thought, we decided that when you live together and you don't have a marriage certificate, you tend to be less um, stringent in making decisions. You're not as, not as serious about a situation. You're more apt to take a lackadaisical approach to problems, things like that, rather than when you are married, um, you tend to, the way I feel is you tend to work out problems more and you have a, you know, a better understanding of what's going on. Okay. Carolyn, would you like to add to that? Um, yeah, we just, like, like you said, we decided not to live together, but in talking about getting married in the first place, I graduated already. I'm an, uh, a special student right now. I'm getting my paralegal legal certificate at this time. So I guess it was even more of a sacrifice for me because I would have been graduated from college for two years by the time we do get married. But I felt like it was a sacrifice that was well worth it and that um, it'll build our relationship a lot more. We'll have much more of a basis before we finally do make that final decision. And as well as, as, well as that, I wouldn't have been ready to get married if I was at Greg's stage. You right. know, I feel like he, he needs the time to finish his education and things like that. So you will, you are actually out of undergraduate, but Gregory is a junior, right? And yes, so this that's is correct. so this is for for both of you though in that regard. Okay. Yes. Do you all feel that um, you fit into this group? Is it career motivated also? Uh, does it make you all feel more comfortable with uh, with your academic goals? Yeah, because um, we have pretty much planned out how things are going to work after I graduate, and right. right now I just <laughs> we don't think that it would be a good idea to try to blend the two together until because you know we both need our personal time right now and you know when you get married you have to blend your times together and you know that's the purpose of marriage however right now I'm at a stage where I still need my personal time to accomplish all the goals that I, I want to before I do in fact marry Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Carolyn? You when, on you, that note. <laughs> when you uh, graduate what are your fields are you going to be moving to an area where you will not have any difficulty with yeah. both of you getting jobs. Right. We're yeah, that's one thing we've already talked about some and discussed too, so. And sometimes if the careers are very specialized, it's your turn and then my well, turn. <laughs> in both of our careers, um, I want to go into commercial real estate and she's going to be a paralegal, so our field is uh, broad enough so oh, that we, we could together. go to any geographical <laughs> area, yeah. Greg, what about living together? And Carolyn, uh, do you currently live together? No. You no, do not. What do you feel about that? Do you feel it has uh, pluses or minuses? Well, like I said before, um, when you don't live together, uh, it's, I think, no, let me change that. When you do live together and you, you're not married, um, you tend to be more lackadaisical right, about, what you said. about problems and things like that. Well, my question is in regard to uh, the fact that uh, people who do uh, spouse living together say that it gives them a good dress rehearsal uh, of the feelings, the actions of the person, the person, the real personality. Uh, do you, you don't buy that? Is well, that see, when I don't know. I guess maybe I have a traditional thought about marriage. Is when when we do in fact get married, I want the the, the newness, the surprise to be there, and, the, and I feel like if we live together, that a lot of times that takes away the surprise of the newness of the marriage. Are you saying too that the decisions you make? 
when you would live together might not be made on the same basis right, exactly. as when you're married. Exactly. And that is something that, that we also know, and that is that it, the commitment is not the same. Right. And so there's no guarantee that because you've been able to adjust to one another's living habits that you will be making decisions that will keep the relationship going. Okay, I understand that. Now, uh, I, I want to talk to Carolyn now. She is the former Commuter Student Council president, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, she was very active on campus during her undergraduate years here at James Madison. And Carolyn, uh, from, your, from your point of view, uh, do we need married student housing at JMU? Um, I think it's something that should definitely be looked into. Um, right now, married students are singled out in a way they don't have the option of living on campus together like an other undergraduate students might. Um, JMU is, is really doing well as far as expanding into co-ed housing in some of those areas and, you know, expanding their academics and enrollment and everything else. It just seems like it'll be something that should be looked into. Uh, some of the other universities that are at the caliber that JMU was quickly reaching do offer married student housing. and. It seems like it'd be a real viable option that they would need to look into. Okay. Do you have any comments uh, on Greg and Carolyn's situation and on Ricky and Christine's situation? Well, I think it's been said over and over, but it's, it's, it's one of the other critical things, and that is that each one has to make the choice according to how they feel about it and whether or not they feel ready. And if they don't feel ready, they ought to do it. I admire all four of them for completing their college education because we, we do have studies that show if one quits college in order to allow the other one to finish, that it does not create a good situation or a very, uh, it isn't conducive uh, to a good relationship. So I think that on that basis, all four of them are to be commended. And otherwise, they need to make the decision that suits them according to their needs at that time. Okay, now when you say that, do you mean that they are uh that they end up resenting one another if one doesn't have a um, if, if one doesn't have a college education. Uh, it, the one who quit may feel that they sacrificed too much uh, for the relationship, and that the other one didn't have to give up anything, or they may grow apart because their need, their their uh, interests and uh, uh, ability to discuss things uh, is not any doesn't any longer have the same foundation it had when they were in school. So that uh, we find, frankly, that there are more divorces uh, if one does not finish. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Greg and, and Carolyn, I wanna thank you.